Welcome, debtors and borrowers, to Bankruptcy Bailout, because debt ruins lives, not bankruptcy. My name is Matt Burgess. I'm a Colorado bankruptcy and student loan relief attorney, and the Biden administration just announced another extension of the student loan payment freeze. So now your student loan payments are going to be frozen, or at least put into the COVID forbearance until August 31st of 2000. 22. Now we're not going to discuss sort of the, the political issues surrounding the freeze and whether it should have been extended or not. However, I do suspect that we'll probably see another extension that goes through the November uh, 2022 election cycle. Uh, that's almost certain to happen. Um, by all accounts, it seems like the Republicans are going to trounce the Democrats in 2022 and any possibility of uh, forbearance being extended at that point is probably not going to happen because the Republicans have said that they will try to block any further extension of the payment freeze. So what I'm going to address is, well, what should you be doing now? Since the payments are frozen, what should you actually be doing? So let's talk about that. So the first thing you should be try to be doing is try to make some payments. Okay. If you have the ability to make payments towards your student loans, you should be doing that during this payment freeze because your student loans have 0% interest right now, so they're not accruing interest. So every, any payment you make is buying down that balance. And when these loans eventually do go into repayment, you're just going to be ahead of the curve. Now, obviously, you need to prioritize your financial situation. But the point is, is don't just accept the freeze or forbearance. If you have the ability to make some sort of payment towards your student loans during this payment freeze, you should be doing that. All right. Uh, if your loans were in default status prior to this forbearance, understand that the, this payment freeze and the CARES Act and the various other legislation related to that isn't taking your loans automatically out of default. Okay. All that they did was pause any enforced collection on student loans. So they stopped intercepting tax refunds. They, they're supposed to stop garnishing wages. But the loans aren't going to be taken out of default status. So when the loans do go back into repayment at some point, probably either after August 31st or certainly probably after the November election, uh, your loans are still going to be in default status. However, you don't have to leave them in default status. You can get them out of default right now. Now, I have another video that talks specifically about how to do that, and I'll link that in the description um, as well as in this video. But you want to start rehabilitating your loans now. The loan rehabilitation program requires you to make nine months of payments. But guess what? While the payments are frozen, those months count. So you can get onto loan rehabilitation, have a $0 payment towards your rehab while the loans are in this payment freeze. And then after nine months of whatever uh, payment arrangement you arrange for your um, loan rehabilitation program, then your loans are going to be taken out of default status. And then that'll open up options for you to get on some sort of income based repayment program um, or just get your student loans back on track. So again, if your student loans are in default status or were in default status prior to the pandemic, they're still in default status now. That didn't change, but you can take proactive steps now to get it out of default status. And now's a good time to do it because you practically don't have to pay anything to do it. Okay. So, and then the last thing is that, well, it's tax season. Now you're going to be doing your tax return and along the same lines of making payments. Now, if you were one of these individuals or borrowers who was constantly putting your loans in deferment and forbearance, now is probably a time to put your loans into one of the income driven repayment programs. And those programs typically require you to submit your tax returns because the payment is going to be calculated off your adjusted gross income on your tax returns. But again, with these programs, right, they have a set term, right? So, you know, that's usually 20 to 25 years. So you make payments on these, these income driven plans for 20 to 25 years. There's five different versions of these plans. So that's why I'm sort of saying there's a range here. Um, depending on what kind of loans you have and when you took out your loans determines your eligibility for this, a specific uh, income driven plan of the five. But anyway, so 
um, the payment freeze payments, you know, the, the payments you would be making during the freeze count towards that 20 to 25 years. So again, what you should be doing now is being proactive and thinking about thinking long term about how you're going to deal with your student loans and start taking action now during the pandemic freeze. And, and I think by all accounts, we only have a few more months of these payments being frozen. Um, the current extension, like I said, uh, expires August 31st. I suspect we'll see another extension that carries us through probably October 31st, maybe November 31st, but that's probably going to be the end point because after the November 2020, uh, November uh, 2022 election, uh, we're probably gonna see a real uh, shift in political power and um, the Biden administration won't have the authority at that point to just keep extending the freeze. And of course, you can probably also forget about any sort of broad-based student loan forgiveness at that point in time. But anyway, so those are some tips on what you should be doing now during the freeze. Uh, I offer initial consultations to people with student loans all over the country. Those consultations cost $169 to help people figure out what to do with their student loans. And we can also offer services uh, as far as helping people with borrower defense to repayment of federal student loans, negotiating settlements of private student loans, and other things that we can do to help people with student loans. We also offer bankruptcy consultations, but that's for residents of Colorado. My name is Matt Burkus, Colorado Bankruptcy and Student Loan Relief Attorney. Best of luck to you.